About 40 years ago, when I was seven years old, my dad and I were driving out of our neighborhood. We had just recently moved into this community, and we went by a house that had a cross that had obviously been burned that night, and it was still smoldering. And I didn't say anything, and my dad didn't say anything either about it. Um, but a little further down the road, I asked dad, what was that? And he said, well, somebody burned a cross in one of our neighbor's yards. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, they were a new family in the community and they're black and some people just don't like black people. And I said, well, why dad? And he said, well, it's the color of their skin. And I said, well, why is that something that would cause people to not like them? And my dad said, well, I don't know, son, but the one thing I can tell you is that it is wrong. In that moment, my dad laid a foundation for me regarding the sin of racism. And that foundation began with, it is wrong. I would later grow in my Christian faith. I would become a follower of Jesus. One of the stories that would inform my understanding of who we are in relationship to one another is the creation story, where it says that we have been created in the image of God. That's not just some humans, that's all humans. I would later then grow into my understanding of some of Jesus's ministries, his interactions with people, especially a group of people called the Samaritans. Samaritans were a mixed race, and people understood Samaritans in Jesus's day as being beneath or below other people. And yet Jesus would interact with Samaritans. Jesus healed Samaritans. Jesus would use Samaritans as examples of God's inbreaking kingdom. And so these stories began to inform me, to build on that foundation that my dad established for me, that racism is wrong. I would later come to understand that Jesus is passionate about something called justice. It's a word that has come about a lot in the last week, especially as it relates to the killing of George Floyd and the underpinning of racism that has led to that action and a lot of actions just like it, and they are too numerous to count. Justice. It's more than just revenge. It is more than just I don't know. It's more than just pursuing some sort of retribution. Justice is closely related to love. It's closely related to grace. It's about making things right, especially in relationship to those who have been wronged. Jesus has a strong sense of justice displayed when he goes into the temple and finds people being wronged through the exchange of money and through the high prices of animals uh, in the temple that people had to buy in order to sacrifice them as their offering to God. Jesus saw this act as wrong and he went in there and he flipped tables. He became angry. He even, in one of the Gospels, the author says that he even formed a whip and drove people out because they had made God's house into a temple of thieves, a den of thieves. Justice is important to Jesus. And so if justice is important to Jesus, then it needs to be important to his followers. Racism is still wrong, and it is a justice issue, and we need to deal with it. A lot of things have happened in a week, and we have come up with a whole lot of different ways to interpret what happened last week, but let's not lose sight of the issue 
It's an issue that has been a part of our culture as America since pretty much its beginning. And we need to deal with this issue of racism because it's an issue related to justice. And justice is motivated by God's love. Justice is meant to create community. And that community is not meant to be an unequal community. God's community is a community of equality. And we need to address that. So, as a follower of Jesus, I am about God's justice, which is motivated by love in my life. And I want to do something about it. I want to encourage you to do something about it as well. Me and my family participated in a peaceful protest this week. That was something that we felt like we needed to do. We've also watched some movies on this topic, and that has informed us of some of the history of racism in our country. I want to encourage you to do something. Maybe you aren't feeling called to participate in a protest. That's fine. But write a letter. Write a letter to your senator, to, or to the chief of police in your community. Write a letter to your representative, but do something. Or simply watch one of these movies that deals with this topic, whether it be the movie Selma, or the movie Just Mercy, or the movie 12 Years a Slave. There are so many great movies out there that help inform us of some of the roots of racism and how it continues to play out in our lives today. But what I want to encourage you is to do something about this because this matters to Jesus. It matters to God and because of that, it should matter to us. We don't need to find ways to write this off or to explain it away. Those are just other ways in which we will participate in the denial of this issue. It is no longer a time or a place for us to deny what's happening here. So let's follow Jesus into this and let's do something about it. I'm praying for you all. Uh, I miss you guys a lot. Um, and I look forward to the time that we get to be back together. But in the meantime, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. We are the church. So go and be the church. And we will see you soon. God bless.